Browser web developer tools are great for helping you find problems with your HTML layouts or CSS. They allow you to experiment with CSS changes without the repetitive edit, save, refresh your browser cycle. Basically what you'll need for template design is the ability to view the HTML code and the related CSS. There are several developer tools that do this so you can select the one you prefer. One of the first, and probably the most popular, is Firebug. The full Firebug version only works in the Firefox web browser. However, Firebug Lite works in most major browsers. You can install either version at getfirebug.com. If you're going to add it to Firefox, click the large Install Firebug button. Otherwise, click the link to install Firebug Lite. After Firebug installs, you'll see the icon displayed in the toolbar. You can activate Firebug for the current web page by clicking the icon. To turn Firebug off, click the icon again, or click the Deactivate button in the top right corner of the Firebug window. A more useful way to activate Firebug is to right-click over an item on the page and select Inspect Element with Firebug. When you use that technique, the element you clicked on will be highlighted in the HTML section and all the CSS that applies to that element will be displayed in the right window under the Style tab. The middle icon in the top right corner of Firebug allows you to detach Firebug from the web browser and open it in a separate window. Click the same button to reattach Firebug to the browser. There are also options from the top Firebug icon to display Firebug in the top of the browser, in the bottom, or at the left or right. But usually the default location at the bottom of the browser window works the best. You can click the Inspect icon near the top left corner. When this icon is active, you can mouse over any part of your web page to view both the code and the CSS for that element. Click that icon again to turn the inspection mode off. I added a few inline styles to show you how these toolkits work. I don't recommend adding CSS this way. If I select my div and hover over that in the HTML pane, you can see the padding displayed in purple and the margin in yellow. In the Style tab on the right, you can see all the CSS styles that apply to this element. You can edit those styles to try out different options to see how they'll look on the page. For example, I could make the margin 50 pixels instead of 15. These aren't permanent changes and are only shown in your browser window, so if you're experimenting on a live site, no one else will see it. When I click the H1 tag, the Styles pane switches to Styles for that tag. The styles with the highest precedence are at the top of the list. Styles that have been overridden are shown with a line through them. If we scroll to the bottom, there's an initial font size of 100% in the bootstrap.css file. It even tells you which line number you can find this rule on. Since there's a line through this style, that means it's been overridden by a higher precedence rule. Here we see font size of 14 pixels assigned in bootstrap.css, but again this has been overridden as well. So we can keep going up the list. There's a font size of 1.2 EMs and a font size of 28 pixels. Finally, the font size that's active is 36 pixels, which is the inline style that I added in the HTML code. That value is on the top and doesn't have a line through it, so it's the active value. There's probably some cleaning up that could be done in the CSS since there were several overrides that probably aren't necessary. Notice that when I hover over a color number, a pop-up of that color is displayed. If you want to experiment with different font sizes or colors, all you have to do is type in the values. 
I'll try 333 for the font color. The text color changes immediately. You can change any of the values displayed here. Click the red circle that appears when you hover over a line to disable that property. I'll turn the underline on the H1 tag off. Click the circle again to turn it back on. You can add new properties by right-clicking and selecting New Property. For example, in our font weight of Normal. Remember the changes you make in the Styles tab are temporary. Firebug allows you to quickly determine what values you want to use for your CSS rules. You then would have to enter the changes into your CSS file to make the changes permanent. Now I'll quickly show you a few other options you have available. Interestingly, Firefox also has built-in developer tools. They're found in the Tools menu under Web Developer. From there, click Inspector, and you'll see an interface similar to Firebug with HTML and CSS panels. You can access that same panel by right-clicking on the page and selecting Inspect Element. Something really interesting is the responsive design view. This allows you to view your page in a variety of predefined sizes without having to actually resize your browser. There's an option to rotate the size as well. You can use the responsive design mode with the Firefox developer panel or even with Firebug or you can just use it on its own. You saw a little of Chrome's developer tools in the previous video. All these tools work very much the same way. Right click and select Inspect Element. Move through the HTML on the left to view styles applied to that element on the right. Chrome uses a different color scheme to show paddings and margins. The gear icon at the bottom right allows you to change some settings. For example, show rulers displays a ruler when you mouse over items on the page. Also in Chrome, I have Firebug Lite installed. It can be accessed from the bug icon or by right-clicking and selecting Inspect with Firebug Lite. This is a stripped-down version of Firebug from what we saw in the Firefox browser, but still perfectly usable for our purposes. If you're a Safari user, you have similar tools available. If you don't have access to the Develop menu in Safari, you may need to enable Developer Tools first. Go to the Safari menu, click Preferences, Advanced, and make sure Show Develop Menu is checked. Select Develop, Show Web Inspector, or as with the others you can right click and select inspect element. This interface should look familiar as it is very similar to both Firebug and Chrome's developer tools. You can find many other development tools by searching the extensions available for your favorite browser. The last one I'll mention is Web Developer from Chris Pederick at chrispederick.com. This tool is available for both Chrome and Firefox. Web Developer has more options than I have time to explain. Take a look at Chris's site, and if you're interested, install the extension and explore. 
One feature I did see related to responsive design is found under the Resize tab, View Responsive Layouts. This shows your design on a single page using a variety of different sizes and orientations. You have quite a few tools to pick from. Using any of these should make the process of creating a template much easier.